Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dapp University. So welcome back to this multi-part tutorial series that's all about blockchain for Python developers. So if you know Python and you want to start learning blockchain programming, you're in the right place. This series I'm talking about, you know, Web3 for Python developers. I'm going to show you how to interact with the Ethereum blockchain in your native Python language. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. And really quickly, if you want to become a highly paid blockchain developer, then you need my online blockchain developer bootcamp, which is coming out on May 15th, 2019. And you can find out more information on my website at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. And I'll put a link to that down in the description below. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to interact with smart contracts in Python with Web3. So if you're not familiar with smart contracts, they're basically just programs that run on the blockchain. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you an example of a smart contract. We're going to get all the data from it and, you know, pull it down into our project and read some information about it. And I'm going to show you how to do all of that in Python. So here's the smart contract we're going to use in our example today. So this is OMG. It's a token on Ethereum. So it's a cryptocurrency that's powered by smart contracts. And that's because Ethereum allows you to create your own token without creating your own blockchain with smart contracts. And it's basically just a program that governs uh, this currency. It's just money. And it, you know, it, it uh, governs, you know, uh, people's balances. It allows them to transfer tokens and things like that. And we're going to read some information about this token. And again, this is a real, you know, live cryptocurrency on the blockchain that is, you know, worth a lot of money. And we can interact with it and play around with it today in Python. That's what I'm excited to show you. So let's see what we need to do in order to interact with this token uh, smart contract on, in Python. So first we want to um, you know, go to our project. We set this project up in the first video. So check back in that video if you haven't already. This is pretty simple to set up. You don't necessarily have to have gone through that first video. You could just you know, jump in as long as you have this uh, framework ready to go. So basically what we wanna do is you know, pull in Web3 first. Um, but in addition to that, we also wanna import uh, JSON. All right, and we want to uh, get our connection to the blockchain. So we did that um, in the last video where we got an inferior, sorry, an inferior URL um, to an Ethereum node. So go check that out in the previous video if you haven't already. Basically, you just got to sign up and get a link that looks like this. And now we want to actually um, talk to the blockchain. We want to connect to it. So we need a connection like this. We say Web3 equals uh, capital Web3. And we say uh, capital Web3 uh, HTTP provider uh, inferior URL. All right, I'm going to pass that in. And, you know, we're going to run this uh, as a script. And we can just check to see that everything's working. We can say Web3 is uh, connected. I believe that's how it works. Oops, sorry. And we'll say print. All right, we'll run this script to see if everything's working properly. Uh, we'll just say... Uh, Python, say app.py. All right, so we're connected. That's good. So I'm going to clear this out. So what do we need to do? We need to actually connect to this smart contract, okay? And we need a couple of pieces of information about it. What we need is an ABI, and we need an address. Sorry, my text editor is going nuts here. So what are these two pieces of information? Well, the ABI is basically just going to be a, a JSON array that describes what the smart contract looks like, okay? And the address is actually going to be the address of the deployed smart contract on the blockchain. And with these two pieces of information, we can actually reconstruct the smart contract in Python to interact with it and, you know, get data from the blockchain about it. So let's take a look here. Um, you know, this is Etherscan where we can see the token. So we need to find the address. And we can see that right here. This is the smart contract address. We'll just copy this. And we'll go back to your project. We'll paste it in. All right. And now we need the ABI. So, you know, what is that and where is it? All right, I've actually got the code pulled up here. Uh, so I'm going to scroll down and find the ABI. So this is what the ABI looks like. It's basically this is big JSON array that describes the functions on the smart contract. Um, we're going to want all of these in order to... Um, you know, basically be able to talk to our smart contract in Python. So just take all this and copy it. Copy like this. Okay, copy to clipboard. And now we're going to paste that into um, 
our project like this. We'll just minimize this and say ABI is this. Oh, sorry, I had to use single quotes. All right. So now what we actually want to do is uh, do this. I'm going to say uh, take JSON and then loads and then do that. Okay. So now we're going to have the ABI the way we want it. Okay. So now with these two pieces of information, we can uh, reconstruct our contract with Web3 and Python. We can say contract um, is equal to web3.eth.contract. We can say address. And address is going to be address. And then ABI is going to be ABI. Okay. And we can just print the contract. Make sure this is working. And we'll just run the app again. Okay. So we see that no errors so far. So good. So now what we can do is actually call the smart contract functions. We want to see how many tokens there are. So we can actually go back to Etherscan and pull up the information. Um, you know, we can see that uh, this total supply is like 140, some big, large number, I think million, if I look at it at first glance. So we can go back to our code and actually read that number from the blockchain like this. We could say total supply is equal to uh, contract functions and then total supply. And in order to actually get this, it's not enough to just to call the function. We actually have to do uh, additionally this call. Okay, so in Web3, there are, there are call functions and then there are send functions. And we can talk about the send functions in another video. But basically, call just means we're reading data from the blockchain. And a send function means we're going to be writing data. And that's going to require some extra parameters like uh, signing the transaction and paying gas fees and stuff like that. So we'll get to that in another video. But this is just how you uh, read data from the smart contract is with this extra call function at the end, right? So now I'm going to print total supply and we can run our app again. All right, we got a value back. So boom, we've actually read some information from the smart contract from the blockchain. And we can see that number looks somewhat like this, but it's got a lot more. Like it looks like the decimal's in the wrong place. So why is that? Well, that's because the value we got back is actually the way amount. And I talked about this in the last video. So when you're dealing with cryptocurrencies, they have a decimal resolution, which basically means like it can be divided by so many decimals. You can actually see it here on Etherscan. This is 18 decimals. That basically means that you can have 18 decimal places after the decimal point um, that you know show you how far you can subdivide the cryptocurrency. So it's almost like having a really small penny. So if a dollar can be divided by 100 in, in the US, you know, this OMG token can be divided by, you know, 18 decimal places. All right, so what we want to do is actually convert that uh, to the real value. So we can do that like this. We can say web3.utils, say total supply, uh, sorry, wait, for utils uh, from way. So we're going to treat this like Ether because Ether also has 18 decimal places and so does this token. So we can just say Ether, even though it's not Ether, it's a token. That's okay. It's just saying use 18 decimal places. Okay, so let's try that. And now you should see a number. Uh-oh. Web3, oh, utils. Sorry. This is different language. <laughs> try this. So there's also a Python version of, sorry, not Python. There's also a JavaScript version of Web3, which I use a lot more than the Python version. And some things are just different. Uh, so I find myself doing the wrong thing in the wrong language. That's the problem of knowing a lot of different programming languages is sometimes you just mix and match things by accident. Um, so anyways, here is the value. That looks a lot more like what we see in Etherscan here. Okay, we don't have the commas, obviously, and you could you know add some formatting if you wanted to. But this at least puts the decimal in the correct place. All right, so now we can um, get some more information about this. Let's uh, say contract, look at the token name, tract, functions, say name. We'll print this. All right. All right, we can see OMG token was returned. Now let's um, print the symbol. All right. Boom, OMG. 
and then let's uh let's actually read some information let's do something besides just uh you know calling a function that has no arguments let's actually get a function that requires arguments okay and we can kind of go back to etherscan and look to see what's available to us we can go back to the code you know you can read through the solidity source code if you wanted to and like you know kind of figure out all the functions or you could just uh, go to this read contract tab right here and we could see uh, some functions here that have arguments so we can see balance of is a function on the smart contract and we would pass in you know an address to see what the balance is so here's a fun little experiment. We can go to the holders tab and find a really rich holder of OMG, someone who has a bunch of tokens. We can actually see that like, you know, somebody has, you know, 19% of all the OMG tokens out there. So we can copy that address like this and say uh, contract functions balance of and pass in that, you know, pretty rich account. And we can say call. Actually, let's, instead of doing the balance by itself, say balance. And then we'll do the same thing we did up top. We say web three dot uh, from way balance and then ether. All right. So let's run the app. Uh-oh. So I put the, I forgot the S. Let's try it again. Uh-oh. One more time. Oh, sorry. All right, let's try it again. All right, there we go. Now we see that this uh, account actually has a balance returned to us. All right. So that's an example of how you can, you know, read smart contract information from a real smart contract with Python uh, with the Web3 library. So that's how you basically use Python to build, you know, anything that can talk to the Ethereum blockchain, whether it's a blockchain-based application or whether you're scraping data from the blockchain for data mining or what ever you're trying to do with the blockchain, Python is a really great tool for interacting with it. So stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this series. Again, I hope you all liked this video. Subscribe to the channel so you can see those other videos when they come out. And also, don't forget about my Blockchain Developer Bootcamp. It's going to be your ticket to becoming a highly paid blockchain developer, which comes out on May 15th, 2019. And if it's already past May 15th, 2019, I'm sure you can find a link down in the description below that's going to let you know about my Blockchain Developer Bootcamp. So again, hope you all like this video. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.